Uh, and I think my comments have been uh, anticipated by some others here, uh, not surprisingly, I think. Um, in conversations with lots of you in the past few days, I uh, found myself remembering lots of the things Ron said and taught and preached, and I found it pretty easy to locate those seminal points of Christian faith and of human decency that he left with me. So I'd like to reflect on those things for just a couple of minutes, I won't take very long, and to talk about Ron's time at King's, because King's was a very big part of Ron's life. King's did two things for Ron. It provided Ron with two things, I think. The opportunity to be, um, become a masterful teacher, which he was, and the opportunity to lead a Catholic parish. Uh, he did both those things with all his heart, with all his skill, with all his energy. And the results, just like the man himself, were extraordinary. Um, Ron had a long, illustrious, and sometimes bumpy relationship with King's. I first met Ron in 1977 when I arrived here as a first year student. I was one of those odd students who actually went to Mass sometimes. Um, I can't claim that I understood all of Ron's sermons. Um, I didn't, but that wasn't the most important thing. I think what struck me, and many others, was that Ron was someone who took the Gospel very seriously. Uh, he provoked big questions, and he asked them of himself. He promoted others asking those questions of themselves and the world around them. Um, his sermons were inspired, and they inspired many of us. Uh, I can still hear the questions that Ron posed. You know, what does God want for us? God wants us to grow up. <laughs> How do we measure our success, you know, as human beings, as Christians? You know, well, it's not your bank account or the number of letters behind your name, uh, or the car you drive, or the clothes you wear, but rather it's in how you uh, approach the other and welcome the other openly and generously and sincerely. Um, for Ron, it was pretty clear that social justice was at the very center of the gospel and Christian faith, and I think he lived that way. Um, he also cautioned against the appearance of, uh, of, sorry, of the risk of appearing to do the right things without really doing them. And duplicity and hypocrisy were something that he just couldn't tolerate. And uh, uh, he spoke truth to power, as others have noted, and he was the first to say that that won't often make you popular. It's a risky thing to do, but it didn't stop him from doing the right thing. Um, Ron's sermons will stay with me for the rest of my life, I'm pretty sure. So the only problem with that is that he spoiled me. Um, the caliber of his preaching has made it very difficult for me to settle for what I hear in many other churches. And I, I don't want to take anything away from those other homilists. I know they're doing their best. But Ron was uh, in a league of his own. Uh, fortunately for us, and thanks to the efforts of Tudis and Rita largely, we have a wonderful repository of Ron's preaching uh, online. And if you don't know it, I would encourage you to find it. Um, I never had Ron as a teacher, but I know the impact his teaching had on many others because I, I saw students on a regular basis over the past 30 years here uh, who were rocked by his teaching. Uh, they were challenged and inspired, and those lessons stayed with them. You know, beyond the course, beyond the exam, it's how you live. Uh, and, and that's something that's a big part of his legacy. Ron embraced leading a Catholic parish here at King's in the same way he approached teaching and preaching. He was all in. Um, recently, some of us reminisced about coming to Mass here, uh, and it was kind of one-stop shopping. He gave the term a whole new meaning. We could come and receive communion. You could hear an inspired homily. We gathered in this very room for coffee and donuts, and the donuts were passed around a little earlier. I think in homage to Ron. Um, you could raid his extensive and eclectic video collection and take home movies for the week. And you could pick up the New York Sunday Times at a reduced rate. So you were all set for the week. Um, you know, Ron was sometimes accused of being unorthodox. I think many of us were attracted, frankly, by his provocative views um, and his interpretation of uh, the gospel. And, and he would say, you know, those who charge me with being unorthodox miss the mark. 
Um, he believed that his views were closer to church orthodoxy than much of what the church, the official church, represented. And I, I think he may have been right about that. Ron was generous to a fault, as many others have noted here. He was generous with his time, with his talents, uh, as a counselor, as a teacher, as a father, uh, with his resources, both financial and philosophical. Uh, he shared gladly his love of art, music, literature. Um, one final thought, I think, you know, Ron taught and preached that a commitment to creating social justice, as opposed to just talking about it in polite terms, is at the center of the gospel and true Christian practice. Uh, we at the college proclaim that to be the case as well. We say that social justice is central to the mission and vision of King's University College. Ron would encourage us to examine that claim very closely. And I think he would say that, that it's important to examine how we do that, how we approach that, from the boardroom, to the classroom, to the lunchroom. And at an important time in the life of this college, as we will seek a new principal, we would do well to remember those things. What I will always value most about my interaction with Ron was that he helped me to set and frequently reset my moral compass. You know, he asked you to examine the values that you held most dear and those you live by. Uh, I will miss him dearly, but I'm grateful for having had the privilege of knowing him.